Okay, so now that we've completed the um, piece, part pieces, we're going to begin on the assembly by making the assembly for the master rod. So to do that, we're going to go to Start Mechanical Design, Assembly Design. Go and click Existing Component button, looks like blank sheet of paper with a yellow arrow. Click the Product 1 tree. We're going to find our parts. And now the parts we need actually are going to be the master rod, the master bearing rod, the master rod, the piston pin plug, piston pin, piston ring, piston head, and the rod bush upper. That should be everything. Okay, so open those parts. Okay, sorry, Kati crashed on me. So, um, picking up where we left off. Once you've got all the parts in, there's going to be a few pieces that we have to make duplicates of, namely the rings and the plug. So go ahead and click on those parts in your tree, hit copy, hit paste. Now we need two piston pig plugs, so now I have them. Um, we also need four piston rings. Copy, paste. Okay, so now I have all the parts I need for this assembly. Uh, go ahead and manipulate them by hitting the manipulate butter button and move them around the XY plane just so you can see all the pieces. And we're actually going to move the master rod into the middle because it's going to be the main piece we're going to work with. So click OK when you're done. Now to begin applying constraints in Katia, you want to pick one part to fix and try and constrain as much as possible off the pick's fixed part. And it's a good idea to pick the part that has the most things attached to it. In this case, that's going to be our master rod. So you're going to find the constraints toolbar, which I'm, nope, there it is. And I like to pull it out so I can see it all. We're going to use the first four. So the first one we're going to use is going to look like an anchor. That's the fix. And click on the master rod. You should see the fix constraint up here. You can also see your constraints in the constraints on the specification tree. Um, next we're going to constrain to the center of the master rod, the big hole in the center. So we're going to make coincidence constraint. Now you're going to see this box pop up. Just hit do not prompt in the future. Or was a pop up every time. Um, hit the center of the master rod and then hit the center of the master bearing. And now that creates a coincidence constraint which is currently not active. So next we're going to do another coincidence constraint between the surface of this diameter and the surface of the bearing rod. So using control select both surfaces, hit the coincidence button, click OK. Now when we update we should see them go together and that's the circle down at the bottom. Drag it out so it can be seen. Okay. So now we're done with this side. Now we're going to co uh, create a bunch of coincidence constraints for the center here. So coincidence constraint between the smaller diameter and the um, broad bush upper. There's also going to be another coincidence constraint between the surfaces of those two. Sometimes you might have to zoom really far in to get to the surface. Really tiny surfaces. Okay, coincidence constraint. Click OK. So, hit update to see that. Do its magic. Next, we're going to uh, constrain the um, piston pin to the main, the smaller circle. So, once again, no coincidence constraints, like both axes. Um, this one's going to also be an offset constraint from the main surface. I'm going to select the surface, select the other surface, and we're just going to go ahead and do an offset constraint of either 13 millimeters. Is it going to be 13 or negative 13? Update to see what it does. 13 looks about correct. So we'll increase it to 14. Just getting picky there. Um, you may have to play with these numbers to make something that looks a little bit better. So, once we've done that, what we're going to do is um, go ahead and do one last coincidence constraint for the piston head. This one's actually going to turn out interesting. So, getting the center, 
You want it to go through the holes we created in it. Now if you click update, it's going to line it up, but now it's not at the right angle. So what we're going to do is rotate it around a bit. We're going to add an angle constraint. What we're going to do is we're going to angle this surface and this surface approximately 90 degrees from each other. Okay, It shouldn't be exactly 90 degrees because keep in mind that when we created this surface right here, it's not a straight surface, it's at an angle, so this isn't going to fit on here completely perfect, but you can go back in and check the angles yourself. The purpose of this is not to have something that's 100% correct, but just to show you how to put it together. So, returning to the ISO view. Um, next we're going to go ahead and start create an offset constraint between the rod here and this upper surface on the head. We're going to offset that about 20 millimeters. Update to see what that looks like. That looks about right. Okay, now for the first time I'm not going to be constraining directly to the master rod. So this time I'm going to be constraining to the piston pin. Which you can't really see so I'll go ahead and drag this out so you can see it. So, okay, so here's Master Rod, and we're going to do, oh wait, no, before we do that, we're going to do two more coincidence constraints between the um, Master Rod, this diameter, and the piston pin plugs, because both of those need to line up. So. Okay, and then we're going to do surface constraints. A surface constraint between the piston pin head, or the piston, yeah, the piston pin, and the piston pin plug. So we're going to select the top surface of the piston pin. And the bottom surface of the piston pin plug. That's going to be a contact constraint. So. I'm going to update those really quick. Now one piston pin is not in place, but the other one is. So we'll move this head back out of the way. Okay, so see how one piston pin is in there and the other one isn't? We're going to do the last one really quick. So selecting the bottom of the piston pin surface there. And going up selecting the bottom of the piston pin near contact constraint update. And you can adjust the measurements as you need. I'm not going to spend any time doing it really, but it looks like um, our offset constraints need to be messed around with. So you can do that on your own. Um, okay, the last thing I'm going to show you, we need to um, contact, put these four rings around the head in these grooves on the um, piston pin head. I'm not going to show you how to do all that. I'll show you how to do one and then you can do the other three on your own. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a coincidence constraint between the um, the head itself and one of the rings. We'll go with this one. Okay, next we're going to do a surface constraint. You're going to select one of the sur one of these surfaces, either this one or something like say this surface. Either surface is fine. Um, just don't select the surface in the middle here that you can't really see. Just don't select this one because that's already covered by the constant constraint. That would be redundant. 
to put a surface constraint there. So once you selected that, go back, select one of the edges of the ring, right like that, and that's a contact constraint. Hit update. What you see is we have one pin in place, and you can do that for the other four. And then we mess around with your um, uh, offset constraints to get something that looks a little more reasonable. But other than that, this is the assembly for the master rod. And next we're going to do the articulate rod. Alright, so we've already created the master assembly. Now we're going to create the articulate rod assembly. Those are all the rods you see on the outside of the radial engine. We're going to start by go ahead and inserting the parts we're going to need. Click on the insert part button. Um, we're going to need the articulated rod, the piston pin plug, the piston pin, the piston ring, the piston head, the rod bush lower, and the rod bush upper. Insert all of those. Make your duplicates. We're going to need four of the piston ring and two of the piston head, or piston pin plug. Okay, so we have everything on the screen now. I'm going to go ahead and drag them out so we can see it better. Just making nice, neat little loops. This is going to seem really redundant because a lot of this was already covered in um, making the master assembly. So I'm just going to brush over most of it. Uh, the only difference is now we have the rod bush lower, and that needs to go into the smaller circle on the articulate rod. So our first step is we're going to go ahead and fix the articulate rod in place and build off of it. We're going to use two coincidence constraints, put in the rod bush lower, one for the axis and one for the upper surface. You can do the same with the lower surface because they're the same size, but whatever is more convenient. Update that, you see it. Okay, the rest of it is pretty much almost exactly like what I showed you with the rod. So I'm just going to brush over it. Once you finish all four, or do the other three rings, once you finish that, we'll be ready to put together one final assembly in which all of these pieces come together.